Hi, I'm Julia from Rinalda here with another video to inspire you to be creative and make art at home. At the museum right now, we have an exhibition of art inspired by nature, and some of the art is looking at pollinators, the insects and birds who spread pollen from flower to flower to help plants reproduce. Pollinators make sure that we have food to eat and plants to enjoy. And today, I'm going to show you how to sew with felt to create a pin that celebrates a pollinator. This video accompanies a workshop that we're hosting at Rinalda, but I'll include instructions and patterns so that you can make your own at home. To inspire you, check out these pollinators in Rinalda's collection from Martin Johnson Heed's painting Orchid with Two Hummingbirds. Heed was painting hummingbirds found in South America, but here in the southeastern U.S. we might see ruby-throated hummingbirds, which is one of the options for your pens today. We also have a bumblebee or a butterfly. I'll show you the steps to make your own pollinator pin that you can then wear or use to decorate a bag or backpack. Let's get started! If you purchased a kit, you'll receive a paper pattern, enough felt to make your chosen pollinator pin, embroidery floss to match the felt, a tapestry needle with a slightly blunt tip, a brooch pin, and a few decorative elements like wire, beads, or sequins that might suit your chosen project. Otherwise, download the instructions below for patterns and specific directions for materials. Each project has instructions with inspiration, instructions about basic sewing skills, and step-by-step -step directions you can refer back to while making your pin. You'll also find some tips for how you might help provide food and shelter for native pollinators and other ecological information. You will also need a pair of scissors. Sharp scissors will be helpful when cutting the felt pieces. Depending on your pollinator, you might want beads for eyes, wires or pipe cleaners for antenna, and sequins and other beads for embellishing details. You might want a needle threader as well. Start by cutting out the pattern pieces that go with your project. Notice that the pieces tell you how many shapes to cut out of which color of felt. You can pin the pattern onto the felt to help hold it in place or hold it with one hand while cutting with the other. Here, I'm cutting the wings for the bee pin as an example. Here, I'm going to show you the process for making the bumblebee pin. Many of these steps you will also use for the other pins, just with different colors and shapes of felt and different colors of thread. After showing you how to make the bee, I'll show key steps that are different for the other pins. The first thing you will do before sewing is to take your first color of thread and split it in half. Notice that there are six strands. Separate the thread into two groups of three strands. Set one aside to use later. Then, run your thumbnail along the length of one piece to smooth it out. Thread your needle. Use a threader to help you if you need it. Pull the ends so that one is longer than the other. Then, you'll need to tie a knot at the end of the longer side every time you begin to use a thread. One way to easily tie a knot is to place the long end on your finger, then cross it with the needle. Wrap the long part of the thread, the part that's between your finger and the eye of the needle, three times around the needle while holding the short tail in place. Pinch the needle and thread together over the three wraps and then carefully pull the needle out while keeping your fingers pinched over the thread. When you can't pull the needle anymore, open your fingers and you should have a knot. I recommend starting by sewing the pen onto one of the body pieces. For the bee, you might choose a vertical placement like this. Bring your needle from the back side of the felt to the side where you are placing the pin. Stitch around the bar and through the top hole three times. Then move to the middle hole and stitch three times on the other side of the pin. Finally, finish by making three stitches in the bottom hole, again on the same side of the pin as you used for the first hole. Send your needle to the back side of the fabric to make a knot. The easiest way to do this is to put the needle into and out of the fabric so that the point of the needle is sticking out near the thread that was coming out from the opposite side of the felt. Then again, wrap the needle three times with your thread and pinch the wrapped part down onto the fabric. With your other hand, pull the needle through the wrapped threads until it tugs. This will leave you with a knot. You can practice a few times on a scrap piece of felt if you need to cut off your thread, leaving a short tail. For the next step, you'll start to decorate the other body piece. 
the one that you'll see. Place it on top of the side you stitched the pin to and make sure the pieces match. Note, the pins aren't perfectly symmetrical, so it will match on one side of the fabric but not on the other. The sides that are touching are the wrong sides. You want to decorate the right side of the fabric of the top piece. For the B, we'll start with the eyes and prepare yellow thread the way we did with the black by first splitting it, then tying a knot at the end. You might use felt circles for eyes like I'm doing here, or you might use a sequin and a little bead. Alternatively, you could just draw on the eyes with thread by making three short stitches side by side for each eye. Tie off the same way we did before. For the B, you can make stripes by stitching the yellow abdomen on with black thread. If you want a solid line that's unbroken, you can use the back stitch that I'm using here, or use a simple running stitch that I recommend for most of your stitching on this project. In a running stitch, the thread comes up on one side of the fabric, then goes back down to the other side of the fabric just a short distance away. The distance determines the length of your final stitch. Hide your knot on the back of the fabric. You can attach the wings by sewing all the way around the white shape or just by making two parallel rows of stitches near the bee body so the wing can still flap. Here, I'm tucking my thread under a few fibers of felt in the middle of the back of the body as I move my needle over so that it's ready to stitch the second wing. Hiding the thread on the back like this keeps me from having to make a knot, cutting it off and make another knot, but it also helps make sure the thread stays hidden. After you have added all the body parts and decoration, you will stitch the top body piece to the bottom body piece, which was the one with the pin. I recommend using the same color thread as the body, but for the B, we are going to start with yellow thread to stitch around the edge of the abdomen first. Hide your knot by starting at the wrong side of the top piece of felt near the edge and bringing your needle to the front. Then sandwich the two pieces together, hiding the tail in the middle. Stitch all the way around the edge of the abdomen. When you finish, you can hide your knot in the middle between the two pieces of felt, but if that is tricky, just tie a knot on the back as I did here, then send your needle through to the middle and cut off the tail, hiding it. Switch to black thread, again hiding your knot in the middle, and finish stitching around the body. Lift up the wings if you left them ready to flap. After you've sewn all the way around, tie a knot on the back of the pin. Then, send your needle into the fabric right next to where your thread came out and then bring your needle up on the same side of the felt a little distance away, but make sure you aren't making a stitch on the other side. Tug slightly and cut. This process will hide your tail inside your fabric pieces. Next, I'll show the key things that are different for the hummingbird and butterfly ornaments. After you stitch the pin onto the body, sew the pointy bead onto the back fabric to make a bill. Use green thread and stitch several times around the hole from all different sides. If it flops a little, don't worry. You can make an additional set of stitches when you complete the pin, wrapping the thread around the outside of the beak to help stabilize it. Stitch the red throat piece in place. Then, if you'd like to use sequins, choose the size you'd like to use. Start by bringing your needle from the back to the front where you'd like the center of your first sequin to be. Thread the sequin onto the needle, then stitch it in place as shown by the yellow line in the diagram here. Bring your thread back up very close to your last stitch and thread another sequin on it so that the new sequin almost completely covers the thread that holds the first sequin in place. 
Continue in this way until you've finished adding sequins and covered your red throat piece. You can make a hummingbird eye with just stitches of black thread or by sewing on a large seed bead using four stitches like in the diagram here. For the butterfly pin, you can get really creative, developing your own pattern from different shapes and colors. You can use wire to make antenna. The wire in your kit can be cut with scissors, but if you are using other wire, cut it with wire clippers to avoid harming the scissors. You can shape the wire like I did here, or you can add a little loop by twisting it once. Stitch the antenna to the back piece of felt. You can make designs on the front by using different stitch patterns or by adding beads onto the front of the butterfly. Share your creations using hashtag Rinalda at Home on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find kits based on Family First workshops in the Rinalda store, or find links below for the PDF instructions and patterns if you'd like to make your own without the kit. Cross Pollination, Heave Cold Church, and Our Contemporary Moment was created by the Olana Partnership at Olana State Historic Site, Thomas Cole National Historic Site, and Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art in Bentonville, Arkansas. Crystal Bridges organized the touring exhibition.